Hello everyone, good afternoon. I hope that you are enjoying Oxford, Mississippi. It's unfortunate that I couldn't be there with you in person, but um, we will have an opportunity next time for sure. Okay, at this point, I expect that you are convinced by Emily about the importance of the leptin flavor evaluation modes, but uh, it's my turn to explain what is the experimental um, status on this topic, which is uh, quite interesting. So just for completeness, let me share one slide um, saying what is the matter with the chart leptin flavor evaluation. So we have discussed already that um, neutrinos change uh, flavor and that lepton flavor evaluation is basically an established fact. However, um, when you change about the charged leptons, um, there is still not a clear answer if they are actually uh, also changing the flavor or not. Well, actually they can change the flavor. However, the, in order to induce this, uh, you have to get this kind of diagrams which are heavily suppressed by the standard model. They are enabled by the transition of the neutrino from, uh, from one flavor to the other flavor. But this gets um, branching ratios that are pretty much unaccessible to our current experiments in any sense. Uh, however, when you introduce uh, new particles into the diagrams, like for example, um, the particles that come from the supersymmetric modes and these kind of things, then uh, the, the branching ratios become more accessible. So even actually accessible at, this, at the point of the experiments that we have right now. So it makes it extremely interesting to search for these models because any observation is a clear signature for, for new physics. Even more, well, on the, other, on the other hand, if you put limits on the branching ratios, then uh, you can uh, put some constraints on the parameters associated to these new physics. So this is just the, the overview. So I will discuss through the slides uh, about um, lepton flow evaluation in different sectors, and I will start with the muons. Uh, let me spend a bit of time here just to explain um, the, the strategy for the search, because in the rest of the presentation, you, you will figure out that this, it's pretty much the, the same strategy for, for the, all the lepton flow evaluation modes. Of course, each one has its own technical challenges, but the global idea is, is, is pretty similar. So in this case, uh, well, what we are searching is at the decay of a muon into two electron plus a, a gamma photon. So this is the oldest and most constrained uh, lepton flow evaluation mode. And uh, well, it's the oldest because it's uh, searched for, uh, for muons for a long time. Uh, and the final state is just a, a monochromatic back-to-back uh, -back, uh, event. It's, it's a two-body decay, so you can pretty much uh, identify it with, with the uh, defined energy of this, uh, of this mode. So it's not um, an accident that we are talking about positive muons. There are two reasons why you have to use them. First, uh, that the positive muon cannot be captured in nuclei. So that uh, allows to, to, to stop the, the, the muon without being captured in an atom. And second, that the muon beam comes from proton target interactions. So, uh, so it means that the protons collide and produce pions and then the pions decay into muons. And you always have to respect the, the charge of these particles, of course. Then, then the, the beams are uh, much easier to produce if they are composed by, by positive uh, muons. There are two sources of backgrounds in this kind of searches. The first one is um, what we call the irreducible background because it's, it's, it's pretty much the same signal. And it's uh, the radiative decay of the muon to one electron. And of course, in this case, the standard model case includes uh, neutrinos. So it's, it, what happens is that you miss the neutrinos and somehow you have to distinguish this background um, with the signal using these kinematical features. Um, there is also what we call the accidental backgrounds. So it means um, that you have the, the standard model decay of the muon uh, to an electron plus neutrinos without any radiative process in the middle. But uh, the, the, the photon comes from elsewhere. So uh, this can actually happen and it's the major source of the systematic actually. As I mentioned, um, just for, for the historical overview, this is actually, uh, well, it was the first search of a chart lepton correlation mode. It was done even before the neutrino was discovered. So it's, it's quite interesting. And it's on this paper that the reference is there if you want to take a look. And you can see here the, the, in the sentence that they are testing an alternative hypothesis that the decay process consists of an emission of an electron and a photon, each of about uh, 50 MeV. So, well, yeah, as you can imagine, the, at the end, they, they conclude, fine, okay, there must be a neutrino because this, this process is it's simply not there. And this search was done in, in, in cosmic rays. 
Uh, but okay, we are still searching for, for this kind of uh, decays, but not in cosmic rays anymore, but uh, using these super high intensity muon beams in, in this uh, PSI um, uh, laboratory. Uh, the best limit covariantly comes from, from the MEC experiment and this laboratory and the upper limits in the order of 10 to the minus 13. So they are using a massive amount of uh, 10 to the 14 muons in order to put this limit. And well, the idea is to stopping the, the muons into the, the region of the detector and uh, use a drift chamber in order to detect the, the electron with a time encounter. And on the other side, uh, trying to detect the, the, the photon using a um, uh, uh, liquid xenon uh, uh, detector. Uh, uh, as I mentioned, the, the signal is just a monochromatic electron, monochromatic uh, photon, in the sense that it's a well-defined energy. You have some effects for the for the detectors of the resolution, so that's why this, what is called the, the signal region, is, is not completely symmetri symmetric or, or well-defined in other certain point, but it's a region. However, um, and, and all these points is just the backgrounds, are the, the, the backgrounds that we discussed before. So there are no significant excess, so that's why you, you put an upper limit into the process instead of just calling, okay, this, this one could be signal. And uh, the upgraded version, that is uh, MEC2, expects to, to reach a uh, sensitivity of 10 to the minus 14 with a three-year run. It's a, it's a technical challenge, and they, they expect to, to start uh, very soon. Let's move on. Uh, the next lepton evaluation process that you can search in muons is uh, going the, the decay going to three electrons plus um, well without any neutrino sorry, and this is also a, a change of flavor in the process. Um, and again, it could be actually enabled if you include uh, new particles into the diagrams, while uh, compared with the standard model. Well, this is extremely suppressed to the difference to, to between the the W and the mass of the neutrinos. Best limits uh, are coming from the syndrome experiment and PSI, um, and the, the upper limit is not as strong as in the case of the tau to sorry the muon to electron gamma. Um, there are also sources of accidental and irreducible backgrounds similar as the previous case, and in this case, well, what you can see it's a bit cleaner. It's not so much background, so it means it's easier to to actually reduce this this contamination, and there are no uh, events in the signal region, so that's why you put an upper limit there. Now, the upgrade of this experiment, uh, well, it's the sorry, the upgrade for the search is um, the proposal of the mu. 3E experiment on the same laboratory that will use a very high intensity muon beam. And the, the, the limit that they expect to put is it's, it's, um, it's amazing. It's a 10 to the minus 16. It's just a, it's a number high to, to hard to, to imagine. It's a quite technical challenge because um, you, you have to actually stop these muons at some point and the readout the, of the experiment must be extremely fast to actually being able to, to read all this massive amount of muons that are coming. Uh, you need to get the detectors with extremely low density uh, and uh, yes, it's, it's quite a technical challenge. And you can see here, what are the, the kind of events that they expect with this huge amount of background coming from the from the um, usual uh, muon to three electrons and neutrino decay that uh, you are basically not detecting the neutrino. So it's it's why do you you misidentify this as a signal, and uh, well there could be uh, other kind of uh, backgrounds there. Let's move on. Uh, there is one more way to search for. Um, lepton flare evaluation in, in muons, which is actually uh, capturing the muon into an atom. So this in this case, now in opposite to the other case, now you really want to capture the muon into the, the atom and expect to get this kind of process in which the muon decays into an electron and the, the, the photon interacts uh, with, the, with, the, um, with the nucleus. So this gives you a very um, well-defined signal that is the, 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 the mass of the muon minus the, minus the energy of the binding and the energy of the recoil. This, this, this quantity for, for aluminum and um, the current limits are coming from, from this experiment syndrome two at uh, PSI. Uh, the, the limit that they put is this one. And there are future facilities that are searching for this kind of process. Uh, the sensitivity is also amazing and um, well it's it's uh, much the, the same idea so but later today we we have a talk about this and um, yeah i, I will uh, 
invite you to, to look at the details there. All right, let's move on. Uh, now let's talk about the, the heaviest of the leptons, that is the tau. And usually when you talk about charged lepton flow evaluation in taus, uh, the B factories are, are the ones that takes the, the lead in, in, in many senses, I would describe this, but there are also alternatives. All right, uh, B factories are these machines that collect electron positron you have here through the conference already about them. Let me just remind you that they, they have uh, common characteristics that helps a lot in the search of this ultra rare process. The first one is they have a very well defined initial state uh, up to radiative effects because there could be some, some um, radiation before the collision that modifies the, the initial state, but that's uh, more or less under well understood. Um, there is um, high vertex resolution and excellent calorimetry and sophisticated particle identification that allows to discriminate between the, the kind of particle that is detected on the tracks. So when you look at the cross sections of the collision of electron positron to pairs of Bs, that's why they are called B factories because they are designed to produce a lot of B mesons. And you compare these with the cross section of the electron positron going to, to pair of taus. Uh, you can figure out that as, as many uh, B, B bar events you are producing, you're also producing a lot of taus. So that's why you usually say that B factories are also tau factories. And the idea or the strategy in this case uh, changed uh, slightly. So here, since the, the um, the lifetime of the tau is, is smaller, much smaller than the, the, the lifetime of the muon. You cannot actually transport the, the, the tau uh, somewhere else, like in the case of the muons. So what you do is you, you try to study them directly on the collision point. And it's um, in the B factories is, um, how to say, um, quite useful to have the pair of taus because you can use one side of the decay to, to tag one of these events while, um, you, you use the other side just to, to, to search for the signal. Um, and also thanks to that um, the tau has a larger mass, then it's not only uh, tau to electron or tau to three electrons and so on, but also hadrons can be produced in the tau decay. So this gives you a much um, uh, larger menu of charged electron revelation modes that can be searched for. Let's start with the analogous of the muon to electron uh, gamma, which is the, the tau to lepton gamma. This is the highest non-standard model branching ratio. Uh, this, that's why it's considered one of the golden modes. Um, uh, it's an interesting comparison to say that the rate production of tau is much lower than the muon. So for example, take it, to produce tau in, in very high luminosity conditions, it takes uh, the, a year to produce 10 to the 10 of them. While in these new beam, uh, muon beam facilities, you can produce um, of the order of 10 to 11 in just seconds. However, in the, um, uh, this uh, beyond standard model branching ratio scenarios, um, the tau is actually fav favored by, by uh, yeah, in the branching ratios because the, the, the mechanisms that produce the suppression uh, are, are, how to say, favored by the larger mass of the tau, which uh, makes that the expectation of the branching ratios for this kind of modes in, in taus are larger. So that's why it's quite interesting to, to search for lepton in, in taus, even when you cannot produce them in, in a high rate as in muons. Uh, okay, so as I promised, the strategy is, is pretty much the same. You are searching for, for a two-body decay, so you have a well-defined uh, um, kinematics in theory, the smear by, by the effect of the detectors. And there are two sources of backgrounds also. Uh, again, we have this irreducible background that uh, pretty much means that uh, you, you, it's, it's the same process. However, you, you can get this initial state radiation photon and combined with the um, lepton decaying from the tau. And th therefore, this, uh, this is misidentified as a signal. And uh, well, there are also other kinds of backgrounds, like for example, you misidentify this event that this uh, pair of leptons has a tau, and then you get the, the initial state and combine them in that case. Right, this, and there are um, limits on this tau to, to electron. This comes from, from Babar. This is the strongest one. And, again, and as you can see, you, you can identify the, the signal region with this massive amount of background around. There are no significant uh, excess of events here. So you, you put a limit of the order of 10 to the minus 8. And in the case of the tau to muon, Bell has um, the leading in the, in the strongest limit. 
uh, and same thing uh, this is this this z of background events around the signal region which you have no significant excess and therefore you you, you put a limit on on this one uh, same again analogous to, to the neon decade if you have the tau to three leptons However, in this case, you can access to either electron or muon. So these combinations give you six different modes that you can study. And this one is, is actually pretty clean. You can, you can reduce the background a lot. And as you can see here, for example, is the, the strongest limits come from Bell. And these are just a few uh, events in the background. So just, just compare this with, with this <laughs> amount of uh, background events there. So this is considered quite a clean mode. And um, yeah, it's it's quite interesting to search uh, because of that. Because if you if you if basically you have a, a event inside your signal region, it it really tells a lot. And this is just the limit. So, and the other interesting thing is that uh, in particular for this mode, uh, not only the B factories but also the experiments that LHC can search for. Uh, for example, the tau to three muons uh, can be searched at LHCb because the, the triggers for muons are, are quite good. In this case, the, the, the tau is not coming from, from the collision directly, but from the decays of the B and C hadrons. And the cross-section in this case is, is quite large, so you can produce a, a lot of these taus on, on these uh, collisions. Um, I already mentioned that the muons are a clean signature for the trigger, that's why you can do this. And there are two classifiers in MBI to, to perform the signal discrimination. So this is just a diagram of how they reconstruct the tau. This is the candidate from the from the muons that they are trying to find. And there are no significant excess in the region where you would expect that combining these three muons, you have a, a peak around the mass of the tau. So this is statistically dominated. So there, there will be an update with the newest um, data set uh, that was collected by LSCB. And Atlas and CMS can, can do a very similar thing. So it's, it's super interesting that they can actually get uh, put limits on this. Let me move faster for, for the time. So there are prospects of this at Bell 2. Bell 2 will be a major player in the next decade about uh, tau physics. And of course, shared lepton flow evaluation will not be the exception. Um, we expect that this mode, since it's cleaner, can be competitive with early bird 2 data. And uh, there is this uh, wide range of menu of uh, decays that can be studied. This one is harder to, 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 to study because you have to control your backgrounds that I already described. Um, but this one is um, down to three millions. It's in progress at Bell 2, and it's, it's, we are expecting to be the, the first one that will be published. And this is the whole picture of the decays, um, well, chart lepton violation modes in, in tau decays. Um, so uh, with, when you take into account all the different mesons that can be produced in the collision, so the, the, this is just the, the, the whole picture. And what is interesting is that for many of these modes, um, the expectations of beyond standard model and ranging ratios are actually are around this area. So the improvement of two orders of magnitude with the whole bail to data set will tell a lot about these models. They can, they, we, it can put some limits. All right, let's move on. Uh, there can be also searches of chart lepton fly relation with PDKs. So this is one of another of the sectors. Uh, well, the first is uh, the case of the B0 or B0S to electron muon decays. Um, the best limits come from, from LHCB. Uh, and, and the idea is, is uh, it's very similar. So you have a candidate for electron, a candidate for a muon, you combine them. And so this is the, the, the signature of the signal. Uh, you can either reconstruct the, the Bremsstrahlung of the electron or non Bremsstrahlung. So you, you don't recover the information of the radiative process. And if you don't do that, well, you have this tail. And then uh, try to characterize what is the background that uh, is associated to your search and find for an excess, search for an excess. So in this case, um, LSCB has the strongest limit, but uh, there is no um, significant uh, excess with respect to the expected background. So that's why you, you put a limit. Uh, there is a talk about this uh, in the lepton correlation will be the case on LSCB. So I invite you to look at the details there. Right. Um, another possibility is not an electron and muon, but you can include a tau. However, uh, including tau so makes much harder the reconstruction due to the presence of missing energy. So, for example, HCB, what does is uh, reconstruct the taus from the three uh, pions. 
and then performs uh, simultaneous feeds in, in regions of the beginning of the PDT. So you, when you reconstruct the candidate, you combine with a lepton and trying to find an, an excess, but this is not uh, this is not happening. So you basically, well, the LHCB puts a limit on this, on the order of 10 to the minus five. It's not as strong because uh, it's harder to, to reconstruct tau in this way. Bell um, also searched for this, but in this case, uh, instead of a muon, an electron, uh, and well, the LHCB case, the case of LHCB is a uh, muon because the triggers, uh, and in this case of the electron, uh, the difference with respect to LHCB is that uh, you can use uh, the tag side, as already has been described in one of the talks at, uh, of, uh, from Bell and Bell 2, and then uh, once you recover this information on the tag side, you can use the signal for searching the, the, the the new physics. Uh, and in these uh, B2S LL transitions that have been already described during this conference, what you can do is uh, change one of the leptons for another lepton or a different flavor. And this is also a lepton flavor violation mode. So this, um, th 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 there are searches right now with this very similar strategies that the ones that you have been, uh, you have been listening already. And this is just the, the compilation of the of the different modes with the limits that you can actually access. Uh, well, this is put uh, by well. The limits are from several experiments. Maybe uh, to highlight that LHCB uh, has uh, recently published limits on 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 these modes with um, K star and the muon electron and, and the combinations. So actually, the different. Um, New physics signatures can produce uh, different charge configurations, so that's why you search for different combinations of the of the charge, um, and also this one that is unique with a phi uh, muon electron that is hasn't been done before, and uh, the reference is is there on the talk of Morion, and this is just the the, the overall picture. Uh, the upgrades are expected to be of um, one of two orders. Um, once you have uh, you, uh, both the this large data set of Bell 2 and also the upgrade of LHCB. Uh, they will have no, or no, not only larger statistics, but also improved hardware tools, tools for making the tagging, tools for the reconstruction of the tau candidate. So that it will be quite interesting while, what, once we, we, we get there. And now um, let me move to the final sector that I will discuss. In this case, is, is with bosons, in which uh, and when we talk about bosons, the big experiments at LHC is where uh, are the ones that can actually show the, the muscle. So let's uh, start with the chart level violation in uh, seat uh, zero decays. Um, these are direct searches, again, of a pair of leptons of different flavor. And the current best limits are, are shown on this slide. So Atlas. Um, has the, the greatest limit on, on the decay with electron and muon. And the idea is, uh, to, again, to get the candidates, you reconstruct and try to find the peak around the mass of the particle that in this case is a seat. So th there is no, uh, no excess with respect to the different backgrounds that you, you would expect. Uh, the major backgrounds are uh, the decay of a uh, two two thousand, and the tau decaying to to electron or muon, as, as the tau does. So then you you put basically a limit on, on on this decay, given that there is no no excess on this on this region, as you can see here. And for the taus, in the same case as on the um, B decays, uh, it's harder because you have to actually reconstruct the tau candidate. So you can see here uh, the search. Um, well, it's it's interesting to to notice that the strongest limits are still from from experiments from LEP, both Opal and Delphi. Uh, in the case of the set going to electron tau, it's uh, Opal the one that has the the, the highest limit uh, in, in in this process. There is no significant excess with respect to your background expectation. And in the case of the muon with a tau, uh, is Delphi the one that does a similar search? And you can see there is no no, no excess there. Therefore, you, uh, just a limit is 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 put there. Uh, we expect some improvements uh, of a factor ten at high luminosity LHC. So there will be much stronger limits in, in the coming uh, the coming years. And it's a complement to to all the searches that I have described before. And finally, the search of uh, chart lepton correlation in the most uh, recent particle discovered, that is the, the Higgs boson. So the Higgs can 
actually also present uh, neutron free relation modes that would also indicate new physics. So it's interesting you discover a practical and you can actually go straight to, to search for this. Um, there are some strong indirect constraints from the muon to electron gamma associated to this, but still it's a, it's a good um, cross check of, uh, of this kind of search. And the main background comes from, from again, a pair of production of, the, of pair of uh, tau that just decay and so on. So you can, you can actually, uh, well, in this case, what um, Atlas does is characterize the, the, the shape of the background, expecting to see an excess which is known. Um, this is just the, where you would expect the signal according to the simulations around the mass of the Higgs. And then the limit is, is, is put there depending on the, on the number of candidates. And the, it, it, a very, very similar strategy reconstructing a tau candidate. Um, in this case, it's uh, done from both the leptonic and the hadronic modes. Combine this with either an electron or a muon. And it's Atlas again, the one that has the, the strongest limits. Uh, I'm, I'm just uh, describing things very simply. Of course, there is a lot of technical challenges on this on, on this kind of searches. All right. So this goes to my summary. This was a quick experimental overview of chart lepton violation uh, searches. Uh, I put some emphasis on the strongest limits set to the date. Uh, there is much more experiments searching for these, putting limits, and I apologize because I just couldn't put all of them. I'm just putting this. Uh, references to the strongest limits that are available on the PDG and so on. There are all possibilities that I couldn't discuss during this talk, but they are not less important, like for example, to the case to light masons, to chaos, uh, um, to jet size that this is done by BES stream. And, and also you can get uh, creative and try to find the two-flip violation with the beyond star model particles, like for example, down going to, to, to a lepton and an alpha particle that is an invisible particle, it could be dark matter, or a set prime uh, also that decays to, to a pair of, uh, so you saw it on the Higgs, you discover a particle and immediately you can go straight to, 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 to search for lepton fluid relation mode. Uh, there are pro prospects in, in many sectors uh, for accessing this in beyond standard model in the coming years. So please stay tuned because uh, there are exciting times ahead. Um, I just leave some references. If you want to read more about this topic, I, uh, there are many uh, links on the slide, but uh, I would also recommend to go through, through these ones. And that's it from my side. Thank you.